In this video, we discuss learning outcome number five from lesson 7.1. We are trying to find the point estimate p hat and margin of error e when we're given a confidence interval for the population proportion. That's what we're gonna discuss in this video. So first of all, you should know that a point estimate of p is the average or the arithmetic mean of the upper and lower limits of a confidence interval. So if we're given that confidence interval, we know that p hat is directly in between the upper limit and the lower limit. I think the easiest way to do this is to graph it. So the interval extends from p hat minus the error to p hat plus the error, and p hat is directly in the center. So if I want to find p hat and I have the lower limit and the upper limit, all I need to do is find their average or the arithmetic mean. So we just add the upper limit to the lower limit and we divide by two, and that's going to give us p hat. Now, once I find p hat, if I have the upper limit and I now have p hat, I can just take the upper limit and subtract p hat to get that error. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, if you are just looking at a confidence interval and you have the lower limit and upper limit here, is to recognize that the length of that interval is two times the error. So if I want to find the error, I can just find the length of the interval, which is the upper limit minus the lower limit, but that would give me two times the error, so I divide it by two to get the margin of error. So it's half the length of the confidence interval. So we take the length of the confidence interval, which is the upper minus the lower limit, and then we divide by two. So those are um, two different ways you can find the margin of error, but either way you're going to get the same value. So let's look at an example. In this example, um, we've got uh, this information. It says, the article High Dose Nicotine Patch Therapy by Dale Hurt et al. in the Journal of the American Medical Association includes this statement. Of the 71 subjects, 70% were abstinent from smoking for eight weeks. And they said this is a 95% confidence interval CI with a um, true range of values from 58% to 81%. Okay, let's look at what that says. It says, of the 71 subjects, so that's our sample size, when n equals 71, 70% of those 71 subjects were abstinent from smoking for eight weeks after um, going through this high dose nicotine patch therapy. Okay, now that's the point estimate, 70%. But then they say we've got a 95% confidence interval and that 95% confidence interval is from 58% to 81%. So they're saying, if we're looking at that larger population of smokers who would use this high dose nicotine patch therapy and try to quit smoking or be abstinent from smoking for eight weeks, they say the true proportion of subjects that would be abstinent from smoking for eight weeks is somewhere between 80 or 58% and 81%. We're 95% confident that that true proportion lies within those two values or lies within that range. So now the question says, use the statement to find the point estimate p hat and the margin of error e. Now, we might already say, I already know the point estimate p hat is 70% because they told us 70% of the 71 subjects were abstinent from smoking. But to be slightly more accurate, I think we should use the upper and lower bounds that we were given here. Okay, so first I take that 58% to 81% and I interpret it as a confidence interval. So that is saying that the population proportion P, that is the population or the proportion of smokers who would go through this therapy and be abstinent from smoking for eight weeks is somewhere between this 0.58 and this 0.81. Um, that's our, our true proportion. And we're 95% sure that the true proportion lies in that range. Now, now that I have that range, I can use that range to compute p hat. And I've already brought this up on the slide here, but I'll bring that up again after I do this on my paper. So let me show you how to do this on paper. So I've got this over here. This is the range of values that they gave us. One way that I can represent this is like this. I know p hat is directly in the center of that interval. 
and the lower bound is 0.58 and the upper bound is 0.81. And we want the p-value that's directly in between. So to find the value that's directly in between, we take the average of these two guys. So we add them together and we divide by two. So we've got 0.81 plus 0.58 and then we divide by two and I get about, um, or exactly actually, uh, 0 0.695. So p hat is 0 0.695, which is consistent with what they said in the problem statement. They said that of the 71 subjects, 70% 70 of them were able to stay abstinent from smoking. So that was their point estimate. Well, 70% is a rounded version of the 69.5%. Um, so we've got this proportion multiplied by 100 to get the corresponding percentage. And then we could round and we could say that that point estimate that we just came up with is consistent with what the problem statement said. They also want the error. Now the error is this distance from here to here. If I want the distance between 0.695 and 0.81, I just subtract. I do 0.81 minus 0.695. So we'll do the upper limit minus p hat. So that's 0.81 minus 0 0.695. And we get 0.115. That's one way of doing it. That's the way I tend to do it. Just do that minus that to get that. Now the other option is to say, actually, this interval from the bottom to the top is 2 times e. If all of this is 2e, 2 times the error, and I want the error, I'll just take the length of this interval, which is the max minus the min, or the upper limit minus the lower limit. And then I'll take it and I'll divide by 2. So I've got 0.81, whoops, minus 0 0.58 divided by 2. And I bet I get 0 0.115 again. Yep, at 0 0.115. So if I convert these to percentages, I, what we're saying is that our point estimate, our best estimate of that population proportion of smokers that would be abstinent from smoking after undergoing this therapy is 0.695. And then we're saying, okay, if I don't want to use the point estimate, but instead I wanna estimate P with a range of values, let's add and subtract the error from this. So I've got like 69.5% in the middle, and then our error turns out to be 11.5%. So we add 11.5% to get to 81%. We subtract 11.5% to get to 58%. Um, and that gives us our upper and lower bound. So let's look at our um, PowerPoint again. So to get p hat, we take the upper limit plus the lower limit and divide by 2, because we're finding that average, that number directly in between 0.58 and 0.81, and we get that 0.695 as I did on the paper. Or we could find the, or and we can find the error by taking the upper limit minus the lower limit, that's the length of the interval, and then dividing by 2, and we get that 0 0.115. Now, now we can write the confidence interval in this form p hat plus or minus the error is equal to this. And that's nice. Um, it tells us what that point estimate was, and it tells us that we might be off by up to 11.5% in either direction. Now, again, I prefer this number, or this, not number, but this range of values, this version of the confidence interval most of the time, because what this says is if I've got a 95% confidence interval, that I'm 95% confident that the true value of that population proportion, which is the proportion of smokers um, who would undergo that therapy and be able to quit smoking, be abstinent from smoking for eight weeks, is between that 58% and that 81%. I'm not actually 100% sure which of those values it is between 58% and 81%, but 95% of the time it's going to be um, or this interval will capture the true value of p hat 
if you do this over and over again for different confidence intervals and different samples of the same size, which is n equals 71. Okay, so that is the end of our, our video where it shows you how to find p hat and the error um, given a confidence interval. In the next video, we'll talk about finding the right sample size.